Hello, thanks for joining us today. In the last video, I explained how I use the indispensable power of emotion. Now it's time to learn something even more powerful, how to create a customer for life. In this video, you will learn the value in creating a customer based on small sales and the truth about the hidden culprit that could be costing you thousands. So sit back, relax, or take some notes. I hope this information will inspire you to succeed. Are you in the service industry? In other words, do you service clients in any capacity? If you answered yes, I have a newsflash. Your business is in serious jeopardy. That's the last thing you want to hear in a vulnerable economy, right? But it's true. Many businesses are vulnerable because their product or service is customer dependent. Some brave companies are wholly customer dependent. These businesses require one thing to stay in business, positive word of mouth. Without it, you're done. The customer is a fickle creature. In a capitalistic society, a customer has choices. Let me ask you this. If given the choice, would you rather give your hard-earned money to someone rude, ill-informed, and with little regard for your ambitions? Or would you prefer to give your hard-earned money to someone friendly, knowledgeable, and interested in helping you get ahead. So why is it so hard for us to comprehend that customer service is key? People relate to people. A positive human-to-human -human interaction is more valuable than any type of sales gimmick or marketing campaign, guaranteed. So let's talk about that. Sales gimmicks, marketing, clever campaigns. Do they matter? Of course, any moron could tell you that. But people matter more. Investing money in effective employee training is more valuable than any marketing campaign you could launch. And here's why. There are three types of buyers. Unit buyers, location buyers, and word of mouth buyers. 70% of buyers are unit buyers. They are always on the hunt for a better deal. Thanks to the internet, unit buyers have the right information and pricing instantly at their fingertips. 15% of buyers are location buyers. They only buy on the convenience of your location and the other 15% are word of mouth buyers. It's pretty obvious, with the right customer service, you can corner that 15% word of mouth market share and your location buyers. But are you really in the market for 30%? I doubt it. So where can you find the rest of your buyers? That 70% unit buyer demographic. Look, that 70% unit buyer is going to march into your store, service center, or website eventually, thanks to price comparison. If he has an incomparable customer service experience, you have a chance to win his future business. If he has a mediocre, unmemorable, or dismal customer service experience, even exceptional price performance will not bring him back in. Okay, in the last video, I also explained my successful career at the boat dealership. I used emotion to sell boats, right? Well, I'll never forget what the owner told me. Selling a boat is not just selling the boat or even the dream. It was about earning the customer for life. That meant parts, service, and storage too. It's a system, you see. Without a strong sales force, there was little opportunity for the owner to make money in parts, service, and the lucrative storage fees. But a sales force that knew how to earn a customer would make the sale which in turn drives service, parts, and storage income opportunities. Unfortunately, the owner of the store did not realize that his earn a customer for life philosophy was being submarined by one of his most trusted employees, the manager. Here's what happened. Unit buyers often bought new boats from less expensive dealers hours away. Then they would come to our store for a close to home warranty deal. Easy, right? Nope. Our manager refused to authorize warranty work on boats not purchased at the dealership. The unit buyer was forced to take this warranty work back to their purchasing dealership many hours away. This retaliation against customers who bought boats elsewhere lost the dealership parts sales, service, storage, and positive word of mouth. Yes, the company might have taken a small loss on the warranty work, but look at what we could have gained. The opportunity for a positive customer relationship. Allowing the parts manager, service manager, technicians, and sales staff to become friends with the customer could have earned many small sales, the next big sale, or even the sale of his friends. Instead, thanks to this policy, it was not uncommon to lose a customer for life. Takeaway, as a business owner, be sure your managers are implementing your customer service philosophy. When it comes to earning a customer for life, there is no small sale. Determine what type of business your managers might be avoiding. This shortcut could be hurting you in a big way. Here's another example on how to lose a customer for life. I'll call this story Subaru versus Recar. Once upon a time, I decided to purchase a Subaru Impreza. As a unit buyer, I hunted at dealers around the country who were taking part of a $5,000 incentive on my particular model. There were only two dealers that had the car and color I wanted. 
I flew into Norfolk, Virginia, bought the car for 9000 under MSRP, and drove it 10 hours back to Louisville. Eventually, I discovered my new purchase had a front-end alignment factory issue. I took it to my local dealer just six miles from my home. This dealership was in a prime position to win all of my maintenance and upkeep business. This could have added up to thousands over the years. I arrived and described my problem. The manager proceeded to ask me where I purchased the car. I told him I had purchased it elsewhere and his goodwill went right out the window. He said, since you're not one of our customers, I will have to charge you for the diagnostic if it turns out there is nothing wrong. In the end, I was right and it was fixed under warranty and I left there with a really bad taste in my mouth. The next time I had car trouble, I hesitated to contact him, but the dealership was only six miles away from my home. It seemed silly not to. I couldn't believe it. I received the exact same attitude, the exact same horrible treatment. In spite of location, I will never contact that dealership again. The takeaway? If you are a business owner, be aware of how your customers are being treated. Some salespeople searching for the big ticket sales overlook the small gains that could make you big money. Make certain your stance on earning a customer for life is clear. Now that you've heard two stories on what not to do, let's move on to a story that tells you what to do. I love this story. This story is the perfect example of how to treat the unit buyer and earn a customer for life. Have you ever heard of a Recar 1700 canister vacuum? They're fabulous. Not only do they clean your floors, they make friends and plan parties too. <laughs> Just kidding. But this incredibly fabulous product is also incredibly expensive. My local dealer sells it for $950. A unit buyer, I chose to seek it out on eBay instead. A dealer in New Jersey was going out of business, so I ended up paying $500 for it. Well, fabulous products often require fabulous parts. It turns out that my Recar 1700 needed expensive bags, HIPAA filters, and parts. When I walked into my local Recar dealer, the salesperson bent over backwards to help me find the bags and the filters I needed. Even though he knew I did not purchase the high-end vacuum from him, he gave me top customer service. As a result, I will not buy my expensive bags, HIPAA filters, and parts from anyone else. The takeaway? Competent salesperson can build a lucrative career through small purchases. Treat each sale like it is the purchase of a lifetime. Maybe one day, it will be. In today's competitive market, it is critical to earn a customer for life. Every sale, no matter how big or small, should be considered important. Does your business have this attitude? Do your people exercise humility? Remember the Subaru story? Maybe you're wondering what happened the second time I called. The second time I contacted the dealership, I called because my battery was as dead as a doornail. Rather than working to solve the problem, the service manager made a big deal out of explaining that if my car failed a dead battery test, I would have to pay for the diagnostic. <laughs> you know, at AutoZone, that same battery test was free, folks. Even though it was beyond obvious my battery was dead, I did not take my car to that dealer. Why would I? The manager was not interested in selling me the dream of a car that could run, or even being nice to me. The manager was interested in punishing me for not buying a car at his dealership. How does this manager expect to remain in business with such a poor bedside manner? How do you think the owner would react if he knew about the situation? That brings me to our next learning installment. The next video talks about the fact that you must, must, must audit the customer experience. Thanks for watching. Remember, earn a customer for life. Each purchase should be treated as though it's the biggest purchase ever, because one day it very well may be. We hope you'll join us next time to learn how and why you must, must, must audit the customer experience.